Okay, in today's video, as you can see, we're going to be going over another problem involving momentum and inelastic collisions. And this is our second example that we're going to do. And in this case, we have a car which has a mass of 2,000 kilograms. It's traveling to the right with a velocity of 60 miles per hour. We have a large truck, like a 18-wheeler kind of truck that has a mass of 35,000 kilograms and a speed of 25 miles per hour is traveling to the opposite direction, which would be to the left. And they collide inelastically, which means they're going to stick together. We want to know what is their velocity after the collision and how much kinetic energy was lost in that collision. Okay, so here we have a little picture I drew. I like to draw a little picture. Here's the mass of the car. It's traveling to the right. The truck is bigger. I make it a little bigger. It's traveling to the left. And they are going to collide inelastically and stick together. And we're going to try and figure out what is the velocity. Is it going to be to the right? It's going to be to the left. How much is it going to be? What is the velocity going to be in this uh, problem? Now, it says that... Um, these cars collide inelastically. We'll assume it's a perfectly inelastic collision. That means that the momentum is going to be conserved, but that the kinetic energy is not. So in order to solve for the final velocity of these two objects after they collide, we're going to use conservation momentum. We're going to set up the, uh, we're going to sum up, excuse me, not set up, but sum up the velocity and the masses and the momentum before the collision, set that equal to the momentum after the collision and solve for the final velocity. So let's get started with that right now. So before the collision, both trucks, both objects have mass and they're moving. That means we have the momentum of the car and the momentum of the truck. This is the mass of the car times the velocity of the car. This is traveling to the right. We'll assume that's positive. Then we have the mass of the truck. It's important the truck is traveling to the left, and that means it has a negative velocity. Your negative velocity means it's traveling in the opposite direction of the car. And then we can set those two equal to the final momentum. Now, the two objects stick together, so we have their two masses stuck together here. I'm going to add up their masses, and that is going to be the final velocity. There's one final velocity because the two objects stick together. Now, we're going to just solve for this final velocity. That means that the final velocity in this case is going to be the momentum of the car minus the momentum of the truck, right? The momentum of the truck is traveling in the opposite direction. I took this negative sign, I brought it out in front of this term. So it's the mass of the car times the velocity of the car minus the mass of the truck times the velocity of the truck. And then we're just going to divide that by the mass of both of the objects summed together. You see, all I did was I divided by this term to solve for the final velocity. Okay, that's really, I would say, the hardest part. Now we just got to plug our values in. The final velocity is equal to the mass of the car times its velocity. Now, it says up here 60 miles per hour. You got to convert that, of course, to meters per second. We have the right units for momentum. That's 27 meters per second, approximately. Then we have the mass of the truck times its velocity. It's traveling slower, 25 miles per hour, which is approximately 11 meters per second. We divide that by their two masses. So I'm going to multiply these two terms. Multiply these two terms, find the difference, this term minus this term, divide by 37,000, and you get that the final velocity, are you ready, of those two objects when they crash together is minus 8.9 meters per second. Okay, now the minus sign means that the velocity is to the left, so I'm going to draw my arrow to the left for the final velocity, and I just wrote over here just that for emphasis that it means it's to the left, okay? Now you can see the momentum of the truck is much greater than the momentum of the car, so that should give you some idea that in the end, after those two things collide, the momentum of the truck, which is greater than the momentum of the car, is going to be pushing that car backwards, and in the end, those two objects will be traveling to the left with a final velocity of minus 8.9 meters per second. Okay, that's all there's set. Now let's go on and figure out how much energy was lost in that collision. We know it is an inelastic collision, which means kinetic energy is not conserved. So we're going to look and sum up the kinetic energy before and then the kinetic energy afterwards and find the difference. So here's our equation for the kinetic energy is just one half equals. No, Ke equals one half m v squared. The kinetic energy of the car is one half times its mass times its velocity. So here's its velocity. It's 27 meters per second squared. That's in meters per second, not kilometers per hour, miles per hour. And it has a kinetic energy of 729 kilojoules, 729,000 joules. For the truck, before the collision, 
it's one half times its mass times its velocity uh, squared, and that is 2,118 thousand kilometers. Now kinetic energy is not a vector, so I left the minus sign off for the velocity. It's a scalar. Okay, I sum these two values together, and that means the initial kinetic energy, the kinetic energy before the collision, and those two added together, that's 2,847 kilojoules. Now after, okay, I have one half, I have the two masses together, and I just rounded that to nine. It was 8.95 on the previous slide. So I round that to nine, and that means that the kinetic energy after the collision is 1,499 kilojoules. I can subtract those two, one from the other, the kinetic energy before, take away the kinetic energy afterwards, and you get that the change in the kinetic energy, the energy lost in that collision due to changing the shape of the cars, the sound, the noise, the heat, vibrations in the molecules, all that kind of stuff is 1,348 kilojoules. Okay, so there you go. That was a pretty simple, relatively straightforward, I, I think, example. We found the um, final velocity. We found the energy lost due to comparing the kinetic energy before and after. Probably the most important thing in that problem is to remember the truck is traveling in the opposite direction, and therefore its velocity is negative. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Uh, subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent chemistry, physics, and math videos. Leave me a, give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all your friends. Show them how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.